जय बाबा चैप्टर फोर्टी A lot of people are curious as to what took place after the midday aarti in Masjid Ali. Well, after the aarti, Baba stood up and walked to the edge of the parapet of the mosque. All the devotees would gather, and slowly Baba would distribute the holy ash to one and all. The devotees expressed their love in different ways. Some would prostrate at Baba's feet. Some held on to his feet as though they were embracing or hugging Baba. Some kept gazing at Baba's beautiful face and form. Some would begin to weep. Some would express divine ecstasy. Baba would put the udi into their open palms. He was exceedingly generous with the holy ash. Baba would first apply the udi on their forehead with his thumb. After everyone had the fill of Baba's blessings and udi, Baba would smile. All of you, go now and have your food. Go on. Go to your houses and eat your meal to your heart's content. One day. Das Ganu was going through his own dilemma. He had composed writing a commentary, Upanisha Ishvasya. He wanted to write the scripture in a manner that it could be understood by the common man. He had titled his book Ishvasya Bhavarth Bodhini. Everything was going about just fine, but Das Ganu had a doubt. knowing in his heart there were certain passages which he was just not able to truly comprehend it is said that only those who are truly blessed by the grace of a master can expound this holy book the vedas can be explained only by somebody who has the grace of the goddess god guru and also one who has freed himself or herself of all false ego and has become detached from all the trappings of life and maya in reality das ganu wasn't too proficient in sanskrit but he had the blessings of baba and thus he navigated through the esoteric passages of this holy book as said before the true essence of certain passages were eluding him those scholars who had gone through das ganu's book were filled with praise and admi- admiration for das ganu the latter was not happy regarding certain passages das ganu came to shirdi on some work and of course to take the blessings of his lord and master sai he prostrated at baba's feet and was filled with love and joy so ganu How come you are here in Shirdi? What is going on? Are you happy and content? Baba, I am under your protection and I have your blessings. So truly I am happy. Of course. You are aware of everything and everybody, yet you ask this humble man such questions. You know exactly what is going on in my heart and mind. I know why you have asked me whether I am happy. and content as i'm certain that you know what is bothering me you have made me start something and you make the work move smoothly and then for your fun and sport you put obstacles in the way and no matter what an individual does those obstacles can only be removed by your blessings and grace das ganu was seated near baba pressing his master's feet Baba you know that I'm working on writing the Ishvasya Bhavarth Bodhini all is going well and the book has greatly appreciated by scholars but there are certain passages which I'm not happy with I have sort of understood those passages but still I don't think I've got the essence 
of those passages. Will you please explain those passages to me? Go on, Baba nudged Das Ganu. Das Ganu explained what was really bothering him. He spoke about the passages and their meanings and of him not being able to grasp the essence. Baba, if I don't understand the essence of, those, of these passages, my entire effort will have gone to waste. If I'm not clear, I shall never really be able to explain in depth the true meaning and thus the true wisdom of the original book shall not come forth in my work. Baba looked at Das Ganu for a while. Ganu, don't look sad. I am with you. Thus, always be happy. Go back from where you have come and the maidservant of Kaka, Bahu Sahib Dikshit, shall reveal the true significance of those verses to you. Das Ganu was taken aback. How could a maidservant teach him the true meaning behind those passages? Even scholars had failed to grasp the meaning behind those stanzas. Das Ganu, though taken aback, had full faith in his Lord and Master. Not once did he doubt the words that came through Sai's mouth. If Baba said the maidservant of Kaka would help him resolve this issue, then it went without saying that the girl would help Das Ganu come out of this intellectual quandary. Kaka, Bhau Sahib Dikshit, was one of Baba's greatest followers. He truly lived Baba. All his thoughts, actions and words were guided by Baba's love. Kaka lived in Villepale. In those days, it was at a short distance from Bombay city. Baba had a way with names. Bhau Sahib's real name was Hari. Out of love, people called him Bhau Sahib. Baba would call him Kaka or the lame Kaka or the Bambia Kaka. Baba was big on giving everybody a pet name. All those who were present began to chuckle when Baba told Das Ganu that the maidservant would help Das Ganu understand those scholarly passages. In fact, some people openly laughed. For them, it was unconceivable that a maidservant would profess such deep knowledge of the scriptures. Das Ganu did not doubt his Baba, not for a moment. For Das Ganu, words that came forth from Baba's mouth were equivalent to words coming forth from Brahma, Vishnu and Mahesha. In the next chapter, we shall see how the simple maidservant solved Das Ganu's dilemma. Peace be to all. Baba resolve all our doubts and cement our faith more and more in Tao. Jai Sahih.